Greetings, students. Today, let's review the electron transport chain. Remember, the entire point of the electron transport chain is to make a whole bunch of ATP. Here is a simplified schematic of an electron transport chain. There are two important components. Proton pumps, which are active transport proteins, and ATP synthase, which is both a transport protein that can do facilitated diffusion and is also an enzyme that can make ATP. How does ATP synthase make ATP? Well, the way it works is when hydrogen ions move down their concentration gradient, going from high to low, as these hydrogen ions move through ATP synthase, ATP synthase spins, which makes ATP. So for ATP synthase, to make ATP, we need a hydrogen ion gradient, meaning we need one region with a high concentration of hydrogens and another region with a low concentration of hydrogens. How do we make that? Well, that's where the proton pumps come in. Energy from electrons powers the proton pumps so they can move hydrogen ions against their gradient using active transport, like so. Now that we have a nice gradient, an area with a lot of hydrogens and an area with less hydrogens, these hydrogens can diffuse down their concentration gradient through ATP synthase, which makes ATP. In order to make more ATP, we need to remake the gradient. Okay, well, we can power it up with more electrons. Here's an electron, powers up the proton pump, pumps another hydrogen against its gradient. There we go. Uh-oh, we can't power another proton pump because all of our proton pumps already have electrons. We need to get electrons out of the electron transport chain. And for that, we need the final electron acceptor. This is gonna take an electron out of the chain and also will absorb some of these hydrogens and take them away. Now we have room in the transport chain for more electrons to power those proton pumps. And we made our gradient even bigger because we removed hydrogens from the low concentration region. So we've learned that we need electrons to power the proton pumps, which move hydrogen ions against their gradient so that they can go back down their gradient through ATP synthase and make ATP. Well, how do the electrons get to the proton pump in the first place? They get there because there is some source of high energy electrons. This is gonna be different depending on if we're talking about respiration or photosynthesis, but in either case, this source of electrons will cause electrons to jump into the transport chain so that they can power these proton pumps to move the hydrogens to make the gradient so they can go back down and make ATP. Let's go through the whole thing now. It starts with a source of high energy electrons. These donate electrons to the proton pumps. This powers the pumps so they can move hydrogens against their gradient. These hydrogens are moving from low concentration to high concentration which is active transport. Now we've made a really large concentration gradient, so these hydrogen ions are gonna move back down their gradient through ATP synthase, which makes ATP. So add these hydrogen ions move from high to low concentration, ATP synthase makes ATP. And then finally, we need to remove the electrons from the transport chain so that more room can be made so that additional electrons can come in. And these electrons are used to pump hydrogen ions from low to high concentration 
starting the cycle all over again. Now let's look more specifically at the electron transport chain and respiration, which occurs in the mitochondrial inner membrane. What that means is this membrane here is the mitochondrial inner membrane, which means up here is the intermembrane space, and down here is the matrix. It all starts with a source of high energy electrons, which are the high energy electron carriers NADH and FADH2, which were made in the Krebs cycle. These donate electrons to the proton pumps, which use active transport to move hydrogens from low to high concentration. Hydrogens then move back down their concentration gradient through ATP synthase, which makes ATP. Finally, the electrons leave the transport chain by binding to the final electron acceptor, oxygen. This oxygen also binds two hydrogens, making water. And this water leaves the mitochondria. Now let's look at the electron transport chain in photosynthesis, which is part of the light-dependent reactions. This happens in the thylakoid membrane. That means that up here is the thylakoid space, and down here is the stroma. Everything starts with a photon, which hits chlorophyll, which causes the splitting of water, which is called photolysis. This causes high energy electrons to be released. These electrons power the proton pumps, which move hydrogens from low to high concentration. The hydrogens then move back down their concentration gradient through ATP synthase, which makes ATP. Finally, the electrons leave the transport chain by binding to the final electron acceptor, which is NADP+. NADP+, also binds one hydrogen, forming NADPH, and this and the ATP go to the Calvin cycle.